Coming up on this edition of City Scene, we'll tell you about an organization that keeps the community united. Plus, learn more about the city's recruitment process. It all starts now on City Scene. Welcome to another edition of City Scene. I'm your host, Mary Allen. United Way of Pinal County offers a number of services to the Casa Grande community. Here to tell us more is Beverly Pewter, Executive Director. Welcome to the show, Beverly. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about United Way. Well, um, the United Way of Pinal County is um, fairly, fairly young when it compares to United Ways across the country. It was formed uh, by people in this community, in Casa Grande in the Pinal County area, that thought it was important to bring a United Way here, and it started in 1981. So while many started in the early 1900s, this is a fairly new one. Um, it's an organization that's uh, incorporated in the state of Arizona, but it is our United Way. It's the Pinal County United Way. It's operated and governed by local people who make all the decisions about everything that we do, and that from funding to partner agencies to budgets, uh, services provided, everything is done by volunteers and a small staff. So tell us some of the services you do provide. Well, we're really focusing very much on the three building blocks uh, to, for a better life, education, income, and health. Um, primarily, uh, we like programs that help children develop as they grow and are ready to start school. We really want them to be ready to start school and be excited about going to school and then hopefully they'll stay in school because that's the ultimate goal is to get them there to keep them on track and then to see that they graduate and consider other opportunities that they might be able to do for further education so how are your services funded well most of our services they, they're all funded by something other than united way um, there's no one that can fund everything fully and so our volunteers get together and they look at the presentations that those providers who wish money um, present to us and they look at what they need and it, it comes from other contributions, it comes from government funds and then they, they come to us for a particular service and ask us for a certain amount of money for a different type of program and then our group looks at what what's needed and what's out there and how much money we have available and makes those decisions. So how is United Way funded? United Way is funded through the campaign. Um, but most of our, our fundraising administration costs come from the campaign. Um, we do not, we have a government granted program, two of them at, that we fund out of our office and that would be the First Things First Family Friend and Neighbor program and we get a government grant for that and that's totally funded by that government grant. And then we do the VITA program, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. And we get a small grant for that of 6100 And then the United Way puts in the balance of the money to support that program, um, which is about you know, $40,000 a year to fund that. And then the rest of the money goes to our partner agencies. And they can change each year. They can be different. Um, a, an agency can come to us once a year and request funding. And that usually happens... Um, by, by the 1st of March, they'll get an application, they'll fill it out, they'll send it in, and there's a two-part to that. First, they have to pass the governance part. Uh, they have to meet, you know, everybody has to meet certain standards and do certain things to get the 501c3 tax status for one thing and then to be uh, funded by United Way. And we really want, we, you know, we really want our programs to be something that improves lives. So that it's, you know, if it's a nice program, but you can't measure it, you can't figure out whether it's doing any good, then it's a nice program. But we really want to focus on something that we can say, uh, this program is really helping. This program is really helping children learn to read. This program is keeping people out of domestic violence situations. This program is feeding um, elderly people who would not otherwise have a hot meal. Something that is measurable and that you can define. That's really important to our volunteers. Do you have certain focus areas? 
Yeah, education, income, and health are the, the three primary. Uh, we also do domestic violence, but you know, that's a health issue. Uh, it really is. Can you tell us more about the VITA program? Well, this program has been running for us, um, I think, since about uh, 2008 or 9. Uh, we get a partial grant for the program from the United Way of Tucson, which is the one that got the agency that governs, that uh, contracts with the IRS to do this. And then they get other programs so that we can serve all of the southern part of uh, Arizona. So we get a grant to do Pinal County, and we have a program manager. She works about 73% of her time on the VITA program. Um, she's starting that, really working on that right now, and try to get volunteers. And volunteers are trained, and they have to be trained to prepare, help people prepare their income taxes. There's no cost to anybody who comes to a VITA site, and we have VITA sites um, our goal is to have them all over the county. Uh, that's not always workable, but we do have usually six or seven sites in various parts of Pinal County where people can go. And we publish hours and times where they can go. And um, then there's a site coordinator that manages it. And people go there on, on these given days and get their taxes prepared. And they're filed right there. And there's a peer group, uh, peer review, so that we want to be sure before we file the tax that everything's, all the checks and balances are there. Uh, they haven't forgotten anything. And so everybody goes under, every tax report that we file goes under a peer review. And it's filed, and unless there's some issue that we have to deal with when we do, then the person's taxes are, are filed. One of the things that helps is it helps people with the, who have lower incomes be eligible for the earned income tax credit. And sometimes they don't know about that. So they'll learn about that at the VITA site. And that brings thousands and thousands of dollars back into Pinal County families. It's, it's, it's just a great program. So who's eligible to participate in the VITA program? Well, it changes a little bit each year, but generally um, I believe that a, a family um, is at a $50,000 um, income level would be eligible and then the single person is a little bit less but it changes every year but we would be publishing that in the paper when it's out there will be a, a published ad that will list all the sites and their times the site coordinator to call the eligibility requirements and the things that you need to bring when you go to get your taxes because you can't just walk in you got to have IDs and Social Security information and your tax all that stuff and so it will tell all of that thing and including the eligibility requirements that you have um, our, our program manager who manages the whole program is in the united way office and you can call the united way office for information uh, you will also be able to call if you want to go to a certain site when those sites are published i know there'll be one at the seeds of hope facility the new building out on crane i know there'll be a site there uh, there'll be a site up in, um, I believe there's going to be a site uh, at a Goodwill, uh, Goodwill, that will be a new site for us this year. There'll be a site in Coolidge. Uh, I think there's going to be one in Santan Valley. Um, so there's Eloy. There's, there are going to be sites all over the county. And how do the volunteers get in touch with you? Uh, they can do the same thing. They can call us um, if they want to volunteer for the VITA program or for anything for United Way, they, they can call the office and ask for volunteer information. And we can talk to them about what's available and what they might be interested in. And also, if they've got a real affinity for a particular type of, of clients they might want to work with, we can refer them to an agency that, that would be a good source for that kind of volunteer work. Beverly, where's your office located? Uh, 402 East 10th Street. Um, we're right at the corner of uh, 10th Street and Casa Grande Avenue. We're in a city building. It's like a little um, city building. I think it was the engineering department or the water department at one time. It's right next to the park. And uh, that's where we're located. Do you typically see return folks? Yes, we do. Um, we're going up in service numbers each year, and not substantially. Um, I think last this last season we did a 605 uh, returns. And that's in about a six week time frame. And then the year before, it was in the mid 500s. A lot of them are returns. A lot of the volunteers that come back are returnees. Um, there are a lot of volunteers in Pinal County who really want to see this program work. But they have to be. They have to go through the testing every year. Just because they did it one year doesn't mean they're for life. So they have to go pass it. They have to pass a test um, so that they can be. And they have to, now they have to pass and be at the intermediate level. Um, so that they're ready to do most of the things 
that need to be done for a person coming in. So both the volunteers and the recipients are often returns. Do the volunteers have to have prior experience working in the tax field? Actually, no, um, they don't, but they, they do. They can either go to classes that we have for training or they can do it online. Either way, whatever works best for them. So, you know, if they have that capability, certainly that's going to be helpful. But no, <clears throat> once they pass the test, they're ready to go. So you mentioned earlier about your United Way <coughs> campaign. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it kicked off uh, on October 3rd. Our goal this year is 775000 My goal is to get them to a million, I think, in a county this size. The population that we have, we should be able to raise that. Uh, it's so needed in this county, but so many people don't know we're here. Uh, you know, we're sandwiched between two very big areas, particularly the uh, Maricopa County and the Valley of the Sun United Way, and then the Tucson United Way. And we're kind of right in the middle there. And I, don't, I think because we're newer, and they've always been here, I think a lot of people don't realize we're here. So <clears throat> one of our focuses has been to try and get people to understand that Pinal County has its own United Way, has a lot of services that are in Pinal County. Because normally when people l live in a county, they want their money to stay in that county. So um, we really want them to know, here's the services. So when you look at our list of agencies, the services that we're funding are being provided right here in Pinal County. Tell us a little bit more about the services provided in Casa Grande? In Casa Grande, well, we have the hot lunch, meal, hot lunch for the Needy program that Seeds of Hope funds. And uh, they're also having a job training program that they're working on this year. It's a new one. We fund the Salvation Army and all of their programs, some school programming, some emergency assistance programs. Uh, we fund uh, CARA. Uh, of course, CARA works all over the county um, uh, with emergency food, shelter, and lots of other emergency type needs. Uh, Pinal Gila um, Council for Senior Citizens. They have various sites that we fund, and some in Casa Grande and some other places. And those are really hot, for us, they're really hot lunch uh, meal programs, sometimes food boxes, and sometimes uh, feed, feeding on site for the elderly. Um, and sometimes that's, that's the hot meal of the day. So we want to keep doing that. It, it's important. Um, Casa Grande, I don't want to miss anybody, I know I, know I will. Um, the Luth the uh, Catholic Services out of Tucson uh, provides a hot lunch and hot meal program in Coolidge and, and Eloy. Um, so tell us about the volunteer opportunities <clears throat> you have. Well, we have, of course, our, we have a volunteer board and they're the ones that do all the governance and say, yep, you can do this and this is what we want to fund and this is how much. And then there are uh, committees that will, first of all, review all that material that comes into them about from the partner agencies, and then they make recommendations to the board. But until the board approves it, it's just a recommendation. Uh, the committees do not govern. They just make recommendations based on their review. And you know, one of the things that I think is really unique about United Way that, that you don't find in other, other charities is the charities, the charitable organizations that come to us are opening themselves up to a oh, totally outside review by a group of people that are not related to them at all. It's not, they're not board members, it's not their auditors, it's outside people. And they want, those outside people want to see the progress in that agency. They want to see that something's being done with the money that we give. And that doesn't happen very often. So when, when people give to our community fund, everything that we do goes through, under, undergoes that process of review by volunteers. Um, if you designate a pledge, it goes to wherever you designate it. And unfortunately, there's a lot that gets designated outside of Pinal County. Again, because I think people don't even realize there's a Pinal County United Way. We do not govern that. It's a, be, as soon as somebody designated, it, it just goes there and we, don't, we have no way of tracking it. Or telling them what we would like for them to do. I mean, we can tell, sell, tell an agency, you know, we would like for you to go in this direction with this program because we see a real need out there. We're getting ready to do a new needs assessment. I, don't, I think it's been about 2005 since one has been done. So that'll be important to see, based on what we're doing now, is it still fitting with what we should be doing? Or should we be looking at, at, should be looking at something else? And that's, a, that's time to make those changes and say, okay, now we're going to cut back here and we're going to increase here. So how do the donors find out what kind of services have been provided and where their money did go? Well, we publish an annual report. 
Uh, we, we love to go out and talk to employee groups during the campaign to tell them, first of all, to tell them thanks for the gift that they've given, and this is what some of the things that have been done this year. Uh, the annual report will give them that information, and a brochure that we distribute widely in the, in the county uh, has a list of the partner agencies that we're currently funding and uh, those that we funded last year, and some stories about people who have been helped so that they get little tidbits of things that have been going on. Of course, they can always call our office, too, for more information. Well, Beverly, thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I do want to mention that we do give out these FamilyWise prescription cards. They're for anyone. Anyone can use them, whether they have insurance or not. It's, used, it's just a discount card. It's not an insurance provision, but uh, they can go to a drugstore, and most drugstores take them, and they can tell if they can save. There, there might be a drug that the insurance company won't provide and this card might be able to help them with that. And they can get those in our office, and they're all over the county. We have them in, in different sites all over the community. So, And I also want to thank people for their support of United Way. That's always important. We couldn't do it without them. To learn more about the services provided by United Way of Pinal County, visit unitedwayofpc.org or call 520-836-0736. It's time for a short break. When we come back, we'll learn more about the city's recruitment process. Stay tuned. Bet you didn't know that the city of Casa Grande has its own mobile app. This app allows you to report service issues right when you notice them. Everyone can take part in keeping Casa Grande spick and span by reporting sewer issues, graffiti, illegal dumping, code violations, and park maintenance issues. You can download this free and easy to use mobile app called My Casa Grande on most Android and Apple devices. Reporting issues is a fairly simple process. All you have to do is take a picture of the issue and send it to the city of Casagran. From there, your picture will be delivered to the appropriate department and will be taken care of ASAP. Another feature that this app has is a directory of city department phone numbers, allowing you to contact City Hall whenever needed. So don't wait! Download the My Casa Grande app now so we can work together to keep Casa Grande a clean and beautiful city. Welcome back to City Scene. The City of Castle Grande receives thousands of applications every year. Here to talk to us about the City's recruitment process is Administrative Services Director Don Jett. Welcome to the show, Don. Thank you. Tell us about the City's um, Administrative Services Department. Administrative Services provides a variety of services to City um, employee applicants and employees. From recruitment, compensation and classification, um, benefits, employee relations, and most recently we've added a myriad of training classes that we offer to the employees. So how would you describe your responsibilities? My personal responsibilities as the department director are everything that happens in administrative services, the buck stops with me. Luckily I have a wonderful staff that manages all of the um, needs of the city. We are a partner to employees, to department directors, and to the citizens that are interested in coming to work for the city of Casa Grande. I believe that we get much more done through partnership than we do through directive, but it is important that we advise people on employment law such as Fair Labor Standards Act, Family Medical Leave Act, and all of those things that could impact our employees. So tell us some of the duties your, your staff have. Um, I have four staff. Uh, Margaret is mostly focused on the benefits administration. Debbie is our recruitment specialist. Susan is our risk manager. She handles you know, all of the workers' compensation claims and all of the things that happen within the city. For example, when we have flooding, as we're having with this wonderful rain today, all of those types of things. And then Martha is our administrative um, person. While they each have those individual titles, they're all cross-utilized. We are a small department serving a large city, so um, as I said earlier, I'm very lucky to have them. They fill each other's shoes wonderfully. So how many employees does the city have? The city has 377 full-time employees currently. We also have, uh, I'm sorry, 79 total part-time employees, and then of course, as seasons come and go, seasonal for the pools and all that, that grows quite a bit. So what types of jobs does the city offer? Anything that it takes to run the city we offer from public works, which is our streets, our trash collection, our recycling programs, the landfill, public safety, which includes police and fire, 
We have our Parks and Rec, which oversees our libraries, the golf course. Um, we also have our own dispatch center, which falls under the police department, so we process our own 911 calls. So basically anything it takes to run a city. So what types of benefits does the city offer their employees? The city is extremely generous, in my opinion, to its employees. Uh, we offer a very um, generous health insurance program, dental, vision. We have paid holidays, paid sick leave. We offer family sick leave, which is a little unusual. It's a certain amount of time given when you have to take care of a family member who's ill. We also have uh, paid floating holidays. We offer life insurance, long-term disability. Um, there's just a myriad of benefits. What is the average tenure of an employee? I'm proud to say over 60% of our staff have been here better than 10 years. Uh, and the reason why I know better than 10 years is because the way our pay scale works, it takes that long to top out. So over 60% of our employees are at the top of their wage schedule. So when people come to work here, they tend to stay here. So there's also another avenue of finding out when jobs are available? Yes, they can actually go onto that same website and put uh, their information into a job interest card and whatever they um, list as being their interest, we will automatically email them when a job in that uh, area comes available to them. So tell us how the online application process works. Absolutely. So uh, anyone can go on to, as I said, Casa Grande website on how do I apply for a job, find the available job opening. When they click on that available job, you can click on apply. That puts them into our NeoGov system, which is an online application system. It's relatively new to the city, but it has been wonderful because everything can be done electronically. The hiring official can see the applications through the entire process. We don't have to kill a bunch of trees and hand out applications to everyone to review. The applicant can track the status of their application. It'll confirm received. It'll cons confirm whether they have a, an interview schedule. They can confirm their interview through that process electronically and they can be notified um, all at once the status of that application. In addition, once they log on to NeoGov and apply for one job, they can use their same logon and password to apply for subsequent jobs and it will autofill their personal information so they don't have to start from scratch each time. So do we accept paper applications? No, unfortunately we do not accept paper applications anymore. I say unfortunately only for those people who may not have a personal computer at home. To help those people who don't, we actually do have a computer available to them in administrative services so they can go online and apply there and we are there to assist them if they need help if they're not very computer literate. But we will no longer accept paper applications or resumes. And they could actually go to the libraries as well. Absolutely. Much uh, a very good benefit of our local libraries. So where is Administrative Services located? We are actually at 510 East Florence Boulevard, Building B, which if you're facing the front of City Hall, it's the building directly to your left. We're a small building in between City Hall and the Parks and Recs building. So what is the best reason to work for the City of Casa Grande? I think the City of Casa Grande is a great place to work because the uh, leadership truly cares about its employees. I have uh, worked in many municipalities, I've been very lucky in my career and I am so happy to be here because it truly is a family environment and we do believe that our employees are our most important asset. Don, thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Just to remind the residents that they can use our intranet site to find out about job alerts. Uh, we also are there in person should they need us for any reason. To view current city employment opportunities online, visit casagrandeaz.gov. Okay, here's your chance to win a Casa Grande gift bag. But first, I'd like to congratulate last month's City Scene winner, Matthew Conde. Congratulations, Matthew. This month's City Scene question is, how many employees does the city have? Submit your answer on our website, casagrandeaz.gov. Just look for the City Scene logo. Good luck! That wraps up another edition of City Scene. I'm your host, Mary Allen. Thanks for watching. Remember, City Scene is your inside look at Casa Grande. Happy holidays.